Hi, I'm Jess Cuz, and I like to optimize life through product reviews, mental health, how to, and coffee. And today we will be talking about a coffee related product. This is a, a modification that's specific to the Breville Dual Boiler. So I got the Breville Dual Boiler about two years ago at the end of 2020. I evolved from medium to light roasts particularly Ethiopian naturals, although I have been switching it up a little bit. About a year ago, I looked into the Slayer mod. I found it was daunting. I actually ended up doing something else, which was a manual long pre-infusion. I made a video about that as well. You can check it out on my channel. I'll link all the videos and resources I'm talking about in the description if ever you want to reference any of those. Basically, the long manual pre-infusion is to press the manual button triggering the pre-infusion. The pressure would go to about two, maximum three, let go of it once I saw a couple of drops go it would go full speed to pretty much nine bar pressures where I was generally targeting just to keep things simple recently I got a little bit bored of coffee but also less picky so I'm not chasing the most crazy flavors I also don't drink espresso shots pure on its own so then I just decided I'm gonna do the Slayer mod if you have a Breville dual boiler, this is not as hard as you would think. You don't have to be that handy. I'm gonna walk you through everything. There's a big home barista resource that's online. There's some other videos from other YouTubers that are online as well. I'll link all of those in the description down below. Those were helpful for me. And if you wanna see other people do it and you wanna have other resources, you can also consult those. I have a Breville slash Sage. Breville dual boiler that's a 920 XL. There's another YouTuber that did the 900 series. So maybe the tubing's slightly different. You can check that out if you do have the 900 series. The best thing about this is that the mod is reversible. However, disclaimer, this will void your warranty with Breville. You know, do this at your own risk. You'll be using the hot water valve, no more hot water, because you're gonna be rerouting a bunch of stuff and using that for flow profiling, which is a Slayer mod. So if you like Americanos or you want hot water in demand, there's a way better product for you. It's a hot water boiler and warmer. So link a popular model that a lot of my viewers purchased. So you can always drink your Americanos and have teas on demand without an issue. You don't need to rely on the Breville dual boiler. There are better machines out there for that particular function anyway. I just want to give you a quick explanation in case you don't know what the Slayer mod is. The ability to flow profile milliliters or grams of water per second onto your puck. Basically, it allows you to do a long pre-infusion. It allows you to wet the puck a lot more gently and more evenly. Usually you grind finer, it extracts a bit better, you get more flavor out of it. Generally speaking, it's especially better on light roasts. It tends to reduce channeling as well because you really get to play and control the amount of water that's going onto the puck. And also inevitably that does affect pressure. And then also you can play with the flow during extraction. So a lot of people tend to lower the flow at towards the end because the puck is eroding and weakening. And then you can really play with different recipes if you wish. Your efforts will be rewarded with a delicious cup of coffee. Here's what you're gonna need. Some sort of silicone baking sheet, in my case, I have this old silicone lid that broke that I'm gonna be using for this and repurpose it. Some tweezers, needle nose pliers, a JIS Japanese industry standard number two head. Regular screwdrivers weren't working out for me either. So I had to buy this one that I will link in the description for you. And this is the only one that worked. And a Torx T20 head. You have two screws that are right next to the group head that's here and here and I'm taking my vessel number two. Now I'm not sure why, but righty tighty lefty loosey does not apply here. To loosen it, you go clockwise. To tighten it, you go counterclockwise. But essentially you'll get two of these out on each side of the group head. Put them aside and don't lose them. There's two more screws that you have to get rid of in the back. They're Torx T20 to remove this. Really long screws. Same on the other side. To simplify things a little bit, I just removed the water tank and the drip tray in the front so that it's a little bit easier to access everything and to not make a mess. Now we have all four screws removed, the two in the group head, the two in the back. I can now remove the top cover. And I actually just leave the group head screws unscrewed. It hasn't really caused any problems just because 
it makes it easier to access things because those were the two more difficult ones to remove. So I just leave that unscrewed now. All right, be, be careful here because there's actually another item here that you need to unscrew because it's all connected. The same Phillips two head that I had earlier is what I'm using right now. Be careful with the screws. You don't want to lose them in there. That'll be quite difficult to retrieve. And in the biggest bit of irony, a screw of course fell. So I had to remove the back in order to get the screw. Thankfully that was done pretty easily and I was able to retrieve it. What's great with this screwdriver set as well is that it's magnetic. So you have less of a chance of losing your screws after unscrewing them. And it's just a lot easier to work with. Carefully put that aside. This is from the front of the dual boiler. We essentially have our three-way solenoid valve right here. If you wanted to adjust your overpressure valve, it would be this piece right here. This is the stock boiler setup. This is the boiler to the solenoid, which is the black box behind this tube that comes out of here all the way back till here. The needle valve and it goes to the hot water tap. The needle valve to the solenoid right here that goes back down there and loops around in the back. If you're like me and a visual learner, this will help you to understand a little bit what we're doing and why. Now, keep in mind, I am a coffee enthusiast, not an expert. So if I have made any mistakes or you have any additional information to provide, you can please leave that nicely and gently in the comments down below. How it works on the stock machine before you do the mod for brewing espresso as well as the hot water. The water will go from the water tank to the OPV, the pressure will be adjusted. It will go into the steam boiler via a tube where it will get heated up and then go into the brew boiler. And then from there, it'll go into the solenoid. And then you can see the solenoid is like a little controller box, like on a train track where it needs to go left or right. And essentially depending on what action you're taking, if you're turning on the water valve or if you've pressed one of the three buttons here to brew coffee into the solenoid and into your group head to make coffee, or it'll go from the brew boiler into the solenoid, into the tea needle valve with the control knobs, and then out into the hot water. Now with the new tubing, what we've done is we've played with the tubes that you see in purple. These three tubes is what we've changed and moved around. The beginning parts are the same. The water will go from the water tank to the OPV steam boiler via a tube where it will get heated up and then go into the brew boiler. That remains the same. Now what happens is we do not have a direct line from the brew boiler to the solenoid. We've actually cut that when we rerouted it. You have no more hot water. To brew coffee on the rerouted system, what happens is you press the button to activate the coffee, but no water will come out until you actually trigger it with the tea needle valve. Water in the brew boiler is now going to go into the tea needle valve here. And then you control the flow and the amount of water that you want out. So that's why it's flow control, flow profiling. And it goes out into the solenoid. And then from the solenoid will then go into the group head and you will brew your coffee. The solenoid to the hot water is pretty much useless. You can permanently cap it by cutting it here and capping it. I've seen people do that, but if you want a reversible mod, what you would do is you would just cap it at the bottom in the spigot by putting a thick silicone piece and preventing the water from coming out. And I believe what'll happen is it'll create negative pressure. And so essentially this tube will have no water because no water wants to go in there. It'll go elsewhere. And so you're basically cutting that line. It still exists, but water wise, there should be no water going through there. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to move around the tubes. Then we have to remove the hot water tap switch and the hot water tap plug. So let's play with the three tubes first, retube them. And essentially every tube removal is gonna be composed of three things. Removing the clip, pulling the tube out, carefully taking the O-ring out. We're gonna remove this tube right here first. So carefully take your pliers or tweezers in this case actually would be easier to pull out this little piece of clip. Make sure you don't lose it, so have a good tight grip on it. Now we can pull this tube out. We also need the O-ring, so carefully pull the O-ring out, making sure you don't lose or break it. I feel like this is a game of 
operations right now. There we go. Whew. Now I'm gonna lay paper towel to make sure it doesn't wet anything in case there's some water that leaks. Now we're gonna take out this second clip right here on the right. Carefully. Now we'll pull this tube out. The O-ring is not here, so we're gonna have to carefully take it out as well. There we go. Now we're gonna remove this as well right here. The O-ring carefully take that out. So now we have three clips and three O-rings pulled out. While you're here, I would just inspect the O-rings, make sure they still look okay. There's no cracks or anything. These you may need to replace with time. And this is essentially where you would find them. Mine look good. I was careful when I was removing them. So I'm gonna put them aside now. When reinserting a tube is the reverse. You put the O-ring on the tube, push the tube in fully, place the clip back on to lock it into place. There is a gap in here that you can see my tweezers are inserted into right in there. That's where your clip inserts. So your tube goes into that. The clip will go in here. It'll lock onto the tube like so, and it'll prevent the tube from popping out. And the O-ring prevents the water from leaking. So now we're going to route this one from the brew head to here. This is the input valve. So we will now put the O-ring in here. Put it in there. Put the clip back on. So you hear a nice satisfying click. So make sure it's pushed in enough. There we go. Basically, you want the clip to go behind here every time it's clipping in, like so, and it clicks in like that, but attached, of course. And now the output of this one, we're gonna remove it from here. We're gonna now put it into here. O-ring onto here, like so. Push it in and put the clip back on. This one's a bit trickier to get the clip on. You may need to use a plier if you don't have small hands. There we go. Uh, there we go, got the clip back in. And now here we're going to reroute this last cable through all the way so it goes into here. That will reroute to the hot water spigot. And this is the more difficult one. I'm gonna try to push it in and see if I'm able to wiggle it through like that. See, it's not long enough to go through like that because it's not meant to do that. Ah, there it is. There you go. This one's definitely the tightest one so far. Now we're gonna put the O-ring in there carefully. This one's trickier, so you gotta be careful. There we go, and now, there we go, right through. Okay, so everything is now rerouted. The O-rings are in there, the clips are in there. So this is what the new rerouting looks like. You have this going from the group head into the input of the valve. Then you have this output going all the way into the solenoid here. And then we have a piece that's going from down below that we can't see. And then we have rerouted that piece up until here, which is the water spigot, which we will no longer be using. And we are going to plug now. Just remove that. It can hang freely after you remove it, no problem. Actually, just so I don't lose the screws, I'm just gonna loosely screw them back here. So 
I have exactly the right screws at the right place in case I want to reverse this modification. So we'll just do that for now. Just have that loosely sit on top like that. The very last step is taking your tool that comes with your Brevel, this, to remove the hot water here. So this right here, we're gonna cap it with a little silicone. Here, I'm gonna cut out a circle that fits in there and then plug it. You want a thick seal and no water leaking. If there's water leaking, try and replace it with a thicker piece of gasket or a tighter piece. Reattach everything back with the screws in the right place and the cables and such. And then we are good for the Slayer Mod, testing it out tomorrow and the other following days. So I've attached back this piece, which I believe is the heater for the hot plate. It makes sense, it's touching this, and the grounding wire, and we're gonna put everything back. I tend to leave the front screws, the group head screws undone. There's not really an issue with it popping off. It just gives me easier access, but I do keep the screws in here identified in the little ziplock that I leave in the tool tray down here. My God, this project has left me battered. Look at this. It's got like cuts everywhere. Not sure what's happening. Got a lot of injuries from this mod. Now, if you're not careful like me, if you don't have anybody to help you and you were doing this by yourself, just note that what I was doing here by having that on the edge kind of ended up scratching the back. So that's not that great, but also my espresso machine is towards the back and I don't see that ever changing anyway. So I'm not too bothered by this, but you know, keep note that that could happen. It's very tight to work in this space. So if you want, you could always just put painter's tape on top of the edges or along the entire piece just to protect it when you do work on opening it up and having that cover set aside. Using a common paint stir stick that you can find at any hardware store, you can easily prop it up at the base where there's plastic and you're not interfering with any tubes or wires and propping it up and finding a spot to lock it in at the top cover. I will be making a follow-up video on my results, observations, some more explanations, some interesting accessories I found now that I have the Slater mod. I will update the description when that video is out as well. And I also wanna know, have you done the Slayer mod and what your experience with it has been? Are you considering doing it? Did you even know that this existed? Do you have anything extra to add about the Slayer mod and any of the information in the description down below? please do comment there. I like reading the comments. I like engaging with the community that I have on YouTube. And subscribe if you haven't already. Like I said, I make videos about optimizing life. Like this video as well, it really helps me and the channel and it helps feed the algorithm and it helps other people find this video as well. So that's always very helpful. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.